We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... Normal Show Live, Marijuana Nation. Now, here's your host, Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belleville. Good afternoon, Tokers and Tokats, and welcome. It is Tuesday, October 4th, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Thanks for joining us here for the next 60 minutes of news talk, interviews, information, music, comedy, and more. Got all sorts of stuff to bring you today. Uh, of course, we start by introducing our good friend out there in the virtual studio in Grastoria, Oregon. It's Cannabis Carry. Hello, Russ. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm a little less lonely today. We have friends oh, in the good. studio. We got uh, Cannabis Cure hanging out over here on uh, Mic 4. How you doing, Cure? Not too bad. Good to see you again, Russ. Ah, good to see you again as well. And we've also got uh, Todd Armstrong here for Todd's Toker Topics later in the day. Hello, hello. W- what's our topic today, Todd? Uh, time amongst stoners. Oh, time for stoners. <laughs> I got to bring up that uh, Easy Star All Stars dub thing <laughs> for t- where they do uh, Time by Pink Floyd. That'd be a good one for that. Uh, so we got all sorts of great topics coming up today. Also, I've got a, a radical rant. Uh, you know the drug czar, Gil Kurlikowski, Gateway Gil. Uh, Representative Steve Cohen, one of our friends, sent him a letter calling him for to to remove marijuana from Schedule 1. Well, the drug czar has replied to Representative Cohen, and I've got a copy of the letter. I'm going to read it to you at the end of today's show. It's also Electric Tuesday. We've got some great dance music coming to you today. Uh, we're not exactly sure which tune we're going to play yet. We're still trying to get the downloads, so we'll get that figured out by 20 after. But before we get to all of that, we start with Cannabis Carry and our hemp headlines. What's in the news today? <laughs> We've got so much news today. Uh, First, I'm going to give you guys a follow-up on a story that we've been uh, uh, checking over to ease your minds. Also, one of the GOP presidential candidates has a solution for the drug war in Mexico. Uh, We're going to go to Phoenix, where the fire investigators are putting out a scary warning to its citizens. We're going to talk about a bill that's going through the legislature. And if we have time, we're going to fit it in about a rift between the... uh, timeless love affair between pizza guys and cannabis consumers. We'll talk about that too. Oh my goodness. All right. We'll get to all those stories coming up here on Normal Show Live. Also, uh, I want to remind folks that we got all sorts of new shows that are debuting this week on the Normal Network here this October. Yesterday, we had our first episode of A Different View with Iva Cunningham, Jennifer Alexander, and Sarah Frank. That's available right now uh, as a replay. Should be coming up uh, later tonight, I believe. So check that out, A Different View on the Normal Network. We've also got some shows coming up uh, this uh, Wednesday. Carrie, aren't you uh, guest hosting the Irie Island Hour? I am guest hosting the Irie Island Hour. I'm so excited. It's going to be tomorrow at 8 p.m. and uh, we're getting ready for the, ne- uh, the next Wednesday on the 12th. The Green, one of the most popular uh, bands on the Irie Island Hour, going to be on Normal Show Live. So really excited about that. That's uh, coming up Wednesday, November 12th. The Green right here on the show. All right. And check us out at the uh, Occupy Portland protest coming up this Thursday. We're back after this. This is Normal Show Live. The voice of the Marijuana Nation. Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. 
Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. Inhaling deeply all the sacred smoke. You're listening to Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that gives us these precious rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating... I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. To give you guys a follow-up to this story, just to ease your minds, the initiative to overwrite the legislative bill that overwrote the original Montana Medical Marijuana Initiative will be on the November 2012 ballot. Monday late afternoon, the Montana Secretary of State certified the initiative, yes, when they were able to confirm 24,000 valid signatures that were gathered over the summer. The effort was spearheaded by Patients for Reform, Not Repeal, and they turned in over 46,000 signatures to assure that they would indeed make next year's voter ballot. Originally, the 2011 legislature tried to repeal the program altogether, citing abuses in the system and claiming that the program had gone wild and out of control. The Democratic Governor Brian Brian Schweitzer vetoed that bill, but then the Republican legislature passed another bill, Senate Bill 423, essentially gutting the state's medical marijuana distribution system. Rose Habib, the leader of the Patients for Reform, Not Repeal group, said the amount of signatures gathered should show the lawmakers that they overstepped their bounds by repealing a citizen's initiative. She went on to explain that every county in Montana had their support, and they got support from every house district in Montana. She said when all the signatures are counted, they will find that they did reach the 5% of signatures from voters in over 60 House districts. She said volunteers will now shift their focus from gathering signatures to winning votes. Oh, that is great news coming out of Montana and uh, the repeal of SB 423. You know, they're definitely overstepping their bounds here in the state of Montana by trying to discount the will of the people, to try to treat them as if they're children, to say, oh, you don't know what you really voted there for medical marijuana. That's not really what you wanted. Well, the people of the Montana, people of Montana are about to speak up and let those legislators know they were wrong to doubt them in the first place. And we couldn't let this one slide either. Rick Perry, the GOP presidential candidate, said that he would get the U.S. military involved in Mexico's drug war against the cartels. Those statements were made on Saturday when he also said that as president, he would work in Mexico the same way the U.S. has been working in Colombia with U.S. military forces that are combating drug cartels. The comments were made in a speech in New Hampshire that said it will take our military working with the Mexican government to win Mexico's drug war. The death toll since current Mexican President Felipe Calderon took office in 2006 has now climbed to over 42,000 people killed in violence related to drug trafficking. The U.S. military does have advisors in Colombia who are involved in training, logistical support, and intelligence backup for the Colombian armed forces as they fight cocaine traffickers and leftist guerrillas. But there are no U.S. armed 
forces in Mexico fighting drug trafficking and drug gangs, and Mexico strongly opposes any U.S. military involvement in its territory. It doesn't, however, oppose U.S. funds involved with their struggle. Mexico has received more than $1 billion in USA to take on the cartels. Rick Perry is one of the top two contenders currently seeking the Republican nomination to face President Barack Obama in the 2012 election. Ah, uh, yeah, Rick Perry, like we needed another C student cheerleader governor from Texas as president. Uh, okay, so he's uh, he's basically saying what we need to do here is uh, send in the troops, get more troops there on the border, boots on the ground on the border there to stop the uh, drug cartels. Uh, I wonder if he's looked at what uh, the Mexican presidents have done, Calderon and Fox before him, uh, in response to this problem. Because during uh, Vicente Fox's time, the uh, average uh, or the number of uh, drug war murders there was around a thousand, two thousand, maybe three thousand a year. And so then his successor, Calderon, decided, hey, let's get tough on these guys. Let's put troops on the border. They put a whole bunch, like five thousand Mexican troops from the Mexican army there on the border. And guess what? Death tolls went up. We're now looking at 10,000, 15,000 deaths per year, 4,700 deaths in Chihuahua State alone, 2,700 murders in Ciudad Juarez last year alone, 900 more murders in one city in Mexico on the border than the entire state of California over the same year. You put troops on the border, all you're doing is escalating the violence. The more pressure you put on these cartels, the more they're going to fight back, and they're never going to go away unless you can convince every American to stop smoking marijuana and you and I both know that's never going to happen. The violence is inherent in the prohibition and the more violence you throw at the prohibition the more violence, the more prohibition will give you violence. It's time to end the violence, legalize this market and put it in the hand of law abiding businessmen right here in America. Phoenix fire investigators are putting out the word that an unexpected danger has been showing up in Phoenix homes since the voters in the state voted to allow medical marijuana. The Phoenix fire investigators released a warning after four fires that were tied to medical marijuana grow operations damaged all four homes so extensively enough they had to force the residents to move. That happened in just the last two weeks. Scott Walker, the spokesperson for the Phoenix Fire Department, said in all four cases it was an overworked electrical outlet that sparked the fires. In Phoenix, where the temperatures stay well into the 90s, well into October, humidifiers, air conditioners, exhaust fans, and lighting can put as much as four or five times what the circuit can handle. Since all the incidents involve medical marijuana cardholders, no arrests were made in any of the four house fires this week. Yeah, and once again, we're seeing the problem that happens when you have to force people to duplicate the sun and the earth indoors, right? Uh, you know, the more we keep trying to keep medical marijuana or marijuana in general underground, the more people that don't know what they're doing, don't know, you know, how electricity works or how much you can tax a particular circuit uh, are going to set up these grows and cause house fires and cause problems. Prohibition is what leads to these problems. If it were open and everybody could just be honest about what they're doing, not have to go to the grow shop and wink and nod and say, hey, we're growing tomatoes, right? If we could just be open and honest about that, have licensed contractors be able to come in and set up your grows for you, uh, this would be such a better place. We can eliminate a lot of the problems that we have uh, with marijuana, almost all the problems we have with marijuana, through legalization. <laughs> And a bill that is moving through the state legislature in Michigan would prohibit the workers' compensation system from funding claims for medical marijuana. The bill does have the backing from Michigan's insurance industry, according to the Insurance Institute of Michigan. The bill that is moving quickly through the state legislature would also prohibit auto insurers from funding claims for medical marijuana. SB 321 was passed by the Senate Judiciary Committee and is expected to go before the full state, state Senate for a vote. Auto insurers want the clarification because Michigan is the only state in the country that hold them responsible for unlimited lifetime medical benefits. The insurance companies do not want to be on the hook for paying for medical marijuana. But they also want the language that bans workers' comp insurers from paying for medical marijuana to be included in that auto bill. But now a separate workers' comp bill is expected to be introduced this session, as well as part of an overall effort to clarify the Michigan medical marijuana law. The bill for auto insurers stands a good chance since the Judiciary Committee did pass it unanimously last week. Michigan already prohibits commercial health insurers from paying for medical marijuana. It seems like it will easily adopt the ban for auto insurers and worker comp claims as well. So it looks like another win 
for the insurance companies. Yeah, and another loss for the rights of medical marijuana patients. You know, we don't get to have our gun rights. We can't live in federal housing. We're going to get drug tested if we want to apply for any sort of assistance. Uh, we have to pee test for our jobs. We can be fired just for being patients. And now insurers don't want to cover us. They don't want to cover us if anything goes wrong with, with the marijuana. Again, because marijuana is illegal and it's demonized and it's looked down upon in our society. So they have the carte blanche here to just openly discriminate. I mean, can you imagine the uproar that would happen if we were talking about insurers saying, oh, we don't want to insure people uh, that uh, play flag football games or we don't want to insure people uh, that uh, go to synagogue or we don't want to insure people that are uh, Arabic because they might be terrorists. I mean, any other thing that they might want to discriminate against with respect to gun rights, housing, insurance, and all of this, it would just be blown right off the front pages. The outrage would be so great. But when it comes to marriage, marijuana, medical marijuana. Oh, it's just a bunch of dirty stoner potheads. Go ahead and discriminate against them all you like. There has been a PR rift in the timeless relationship between pizza delivery guys and the cannabis consumers this week. A Colorado man ordered a pizza to be delivered from Papa John's after a long day of work. He prepaid for the pizza online, including pre-tipping the driver. He probably should have saved his tip. While his nine-year-old daughter went upstairs to take a bath while they waited on the pizza, Rick Smith smoked a quick bowl of marijuana. He is, after all, a Colorado medical marijuana cardholder. A few minutes later, the pizza arrived with his two-liter bottle of Sprite, and about a half an hour later, father and daughter were interrupted by the sound of police knocking on their door. The police explained that they received a call from a Papa John's pizza delivery driver who reported that there were small children around people smoking pot. The police at the door explained that they were legally bound to do a welfare check when there might be children in danger. Since a pizza, pizza delivery man never saw Smith's daughter, he had to assume that he did see her playhouse in the driveway. The police verified his medical marijuana card, told the man it wasn't a big deal, apologized for disturbing his dinner, and left without so much as an incident report being written. A furious Smith then called Papa John's to complain. The general manager didn't have much to say other than that the driver has been working for them for a long time. A Papa John's spokesperson from Colorado released a statement about the incident that said, quote, Papa John's of Colorado wants to stand behind the decision that this delivery driver made. He was acting as a concerned citizen and for what he believes was the best interest of our community. Now, another spokesman, uh, this time from Papa John's corporate office in Kentucky, says that the delivery driver handbook addresses what drivers should do if they are a potential victim of a crime, but does not address employees reporting potential crimes while in their line of work. Smith hopes that the driver will face some kind of discipline action, but was told by the company that he probably will not. Oh my God, what a terrible story this is. And yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, the P I, I always thought that when you got a job as a pizza delivery driver, part of the drug test was that you did smoke pot. I thought that was part of the drug test, man. I, you know, I've known so many d delivery drivers that uh, we used to tip in a bud or two when they'd come into our party. Now you got one calling the cops because a medical marijuana patient. Oh my God, what about the children? Well, apparently Papa John's thinks it's okay to go ahead and discriminate against uh, medical marijuana people to go ahead and bring the cops to their homes for merely using their medicine. So I thought that maybe you'd like to get a hold of Papa John's and let them know uh, what you think about this. Papa John's International can be reached by dialing toll-free 877-547-PAPA. That's 7272. That number, once again, 877-547-7272. We just put that up in the chat room as well. Or you can go to papajohns.com, look for their customer service link. You'll be able to find the number there. Also, there's a mailing address, Papa John's International, P.O. Box 99900. Louisville, Kentucky, 40269-9990. Again, that address and the phone number are there on the Papa John's website, papajohns.com. Check out their customer service. Uh, right here it says, we want to hear from you. Minions, you heard it. Let's have them hear from us. All right, we'll fit one more in. In this economy, job fairs are becoming increasingly popular in the face of large unemployment numbers. The San Francisco Chronicle had a half-page ad in their newspaper today advertising a Canna Job Fair that will be held at the West Coast Cannabis Expo this weekend in San Francisco. Canna Jobs is a medical marijuana employment service that partners with companies that are looking for employees, affiliates, representatives, and salespeople in the medical cannabis field. Robert Kalkin, the CEO of Canna Jobs, says that it isn't just dispensary jobs in the industry that need to be filled. He says many 
many positions in the industry are available, from sales to growing to legal assistance to paid activism positions. He said that there are full-time positions that need to be filled along with opportunities for supplemental income, such as affiliate programs and resources for becoming a distributor of a host of medical marijuana-related products. The West Coast Cannabis Expo and Music Festival will take place Friday, this Friday, and Saturday and Sunday at the Cow Palace, located in Dally City, just south of San Francisco. Now, the unemployed will need to uh, empty their piggy banks, though, a single ticket it's going to set you back 23 bucks to get in the door well that's not exactly how i was going to take a break but that's as good a way as any <laughs> we're going to take a break we'll be back with uh, more including your daily toker tune which i believe that's what this is <laughs> so we'll be back stay tuned it's normal show live The High Times Medical Cannabis Cup is coming to Detroit on October 15th and 16th. That's right. The world's premier medical marijuana competition will be in Motown to celebrate the cannabis economy of the Great Lakes State. It's a two-day expo at Burt's Warehouse Theater, showcasing the movers and shakers of the Michigan medical marijuana industry and the merchandise that makes the machine go. There will be seminars with leaders of the medical marijuana movement, doctors, patients, researchers, growers, dispensary owners, and activists. Plus, High Times' own cultivation editors Danny Danko and Nico Escondido will roll into the town with the goods on growing great ganja. Be there for an amazing Saturday night VIP party featuring top musical performances and special guests. High Times will award the Medical Cannabis Cup for top indicas, sativas, hybrids, concentrates, and edibles entered by Michigan's dispensaries and collectives. Come to Birch Warehouse Theater on October 15th and 16th. Visit MedCanCup.com for all the details. Celebrate cannabis in Michigan. Celebrate the resurgence of Detroit. Be part of the growing cannabis community. Hi, I'm Keith Strop, the founder of Normal. In all the years since 1970 that I've been fighting marijuana prohibition, I've learned that drug warriors love to confuse the public with statistics. Lately, they, they've claimed that there are more teens enrolled in drug treatment for marijuana than ever before. It's a statement that, while true, is intentionally misleading. What they don't tell you is that marijuana arrests have skyrocketed to over 800,000 arrests per year. They also don't tell you that we've gone from a few dozen drug courts in the 1990s to over 2,500 drug courts today. The kicker is that those drug courts sentence teens routinely to drug treatment for marijuana whether they need drug treatment or not. So they arrest more people for pot, require them to enter drug treatment, then claim the higher treatment numbers justify more pot arrests. It's an absurd proposition, but no more absurd than banning a plant. Learn the facts about pot. Visit norml.org today. Remember, friends don't let friends drive stoned. Friends help friends finish off that sack, take a walk to the convenience store, load up on munchies, and crash on the couch. That's what friends do. In today's busy world, we're inundated by advertising for all types of pharmaceuticals that come with a laundry list of potential side effects. Shouldn't you have better medical choices? Natural alternatives to pills pushed by Big Pharma? At Alternative Medical Choices, you could choose natural, safe, and effective alternative therapies that are right for your budget without nasty side effects. Cannabis, or marijuana, has been a legal medicine in the Pacific Northwest since 1998. Our doctors will help determine your qualifications for a medical marijuana recommendation in Oregon, no matter where you live. Our massage therapist will ease your aches and stress with soothing hemp seed oil or cannabis-infused massage salves. We also offer acupuncture, Reiki, and other alternative health therapies. Call Alternative Medical Choices in Portland, Oregon at 503-288-5579 or visit our website at www.altmedchoices.com. We specialize in out-of-state recommendations. That's www.altmedchoices.com or call 503-288-5579. It's time for your daily toker tunes, the best in 420 friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today we bring you tunes for Electric Tuesday, our segment featuring the best of modern electric music in the genres of dance, new age, house, and experimental. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. 
Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tunes. All right, folks, welcome back. And uh, normally at this time, we'd be turning things over to Cannabis Cure UK for our Daily Toker Tune. But uh, you had something from Lore Crew for us, but we can't get it off the download. There's a, It's so good that everyone's flooding the internet, well, man. Well, to be honest, uh, it, it might be that because they've just put up a few new tracks. And I think they might be doing some uh, recording with a, a bit of a, a label or something. Yeah, that but, could definitely be it. By the sounds of what the lyrics are like. So, yeah, I guess it's... It's uh, too popular for us. All right. But how are you doing? We haven't seen you in a few days, and people are wanting to know what's up with Cannabis Cure. Oh, Cannabis Cure is doing awesome. He has uh, been back down to California. We went and interviewed uh, Alta California. They're tincture makers. They make uh, products very similar to Sativex by GW Pharmaceuticals. Okay. So we went and interviewed him. Got a lot of science on CBD and how it affects THC and how it works in your body and where you can find it in the plant as well. So oh, cool. Kind of the, the synergy between THC and CBD, how they work together and all that? Uh-huh. Yeah, in the plant and in the body as well. There's wow. a, a, a strong relationship there. And he was saying, like we all say, who are, who are members in the uh, and who experience cannabis in the medical cannabis community, um, it's down to the individual how these medicines work. So GW and pharmaceuticals give him one dose of, you know, one standard type of Sativex to patients that has two milligrams of THC and two milligrams of CBD isn't going to be good for everyone. It's going to be good for a majority of people, but everyone needs that uh, ability to self-titrate. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing about uh, medical cannabis. It's it's the uh, you can find what works best for you, and you can and you can dose yourself and and feel the immediate relief and go from there and treat yourself. That's pretty much his words. If, if you take too much CBD, you can bring it down with THC because you can go really deep into CBD and sure. get memory extinction, apparently. <laughs> That's but, the uh, Dr. Conrad Murray strain, apparently, <laughs> they're calling it. But yeah, you'll be able to check all that out on Cannabis Cure TV. Uh, today, we're going to be doing my last podcast, if that's cool. Um, all right. While I'm, in, while I'm in town, I'm going to Denver next week. Hopefully, I'll be able to hook up with Tim Martin over in his new studio and do a podcast there before I fly back home. Two weeks left, guys. What's all right, we'll on? check in here at 5 o'clock. Uh, Pacific for a live uh, in-studio version of uh, the Cannabis Cure UK weekly news podcast then. Yeah, the penultimate one in the US 2011. All right, I'll be here to engineer. In the meantime, I went and looked for a song earlier today. Not sure what we would have, so I checked out the IOTA promo net. You know, I'm going to notice something when the name of the album is Layers of Weird Volume 1. Oh, yeah. You know, we live in a city that proclaims, you know, keep Portland weird, so I'm going to notice that. And then when I'm looking through the track list, they got a track called Tired High. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's a double shot right there. Tired High Sounds on like Layers. evening again, did you notice? <laughs> yeah, really. So we got uh, Tired High uh, by a group called Your Name. Name, which is actually uh, DJ Coco Arias from Ibiza. And uh, he's one of the world's most experienced and recognized DJs. You've been listening to it as a bed. Let's bring it up. This is your name with Tired High. Ibiza.
All right, that's your name on our Electric Tuesday. Coming up next, we'll be speaking with Todd Armstrong. Todd's Toker Topics, stoner time. We'll try to get to it on time at that. I'm Radical Russ. You're listening to Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Stay tuned. We're right back after this. A copy of that song for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker Tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing media and then Toker Tunes from the main menu. Starfish Designs, makers of the original Gandalf. I'm Radical Russ, and when I want to relax, I always have my 17-inch long original Gandalf from Starfish Designs nearby. The hand-blown borosilicate glass is strong and easy to clean, and the design is sleek and sophisticated. Starfish Designs are available from Bend, Oregon at a glass retailer near you. For locations, call 541-788-GLASS. That's 541-788-4527. Normal Show Live reminds you to never consent to a search. If you're holding and you consent, in most states you will be arrested immediately and you will go to jail. If you don't consent to a search, police may try to intimidate you by threatening to bring in drug-sniffing dogs or try to fool you by saying things will go easier if you consent. Yeah, easier for them, sure. Stand your ground, refuse the search, and ask the officer if you're free to go. If they still detain you and eventually find your contraband, you'll be no more busted than if you had allowed the search. But by refusing the search, your attorney has a chance to win your acquittal before a judge. If you consent to the search, your attorney's hands are tied. You can find a list of normal legal committee attorneys specializing in marijuana cases by visiting the Find a Lawyer link at normal.org. What was it we had for dinner tonight? Well, we had a choice, steak, fish. Yes, yes, I remember I had lasagna. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Here at Normal Show Live, we spend all week taking a serious look at the tragedy of American marijuana prohibition. But it is important to take a break and remember that we are a vibrant, diverse, and oftentimes hilarious community of people. So on Tuesdays, our friend, comedian Todd Armstrong, or Goob the Knob on Facebook and Twitter, joins us to expose the lighter side of lighting up with Todd's Toker Topics. All right, right on time, 35 after the hour, we throw things to Todd. Yes. What Hello, are, everybody. What's our topic for today? Uh, stoner time, just like I was late and just getting here and talking. This was we're bullshitting with Kira. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. No, we're just loving life. But uh, I'm here to talk about time and, and, and stoner's perception thereof because I think cannabis allows us to alter our perception of time, and we should be masters of time, but none of us really are. Uh, time is the fourth dimension that I think we operate in. But stoners really can't seem to function in it because we always seem to be late. And the thing I want to focus on this is I think I've developed a paradigm for how stoners function with time. Is that we can wait all year long for the Cadbury cream eggs to come around. It's a stoner. It's a stoner tradition. The first time you see those at the gas station, those delicious little things. But when we get them home, we can't even wait for them to freeze before we smash them up and put them in the ice cream because we're waiting so long. We can't wait another 20 minutes when something's in front of us. And I want to talk about CPT. It's a real thing. Cannabis people's time. Oh. We are always late, and yes, we do talk in movies, no matter what happens. I don't care what people say. We fulfill these. Let's start wearing some watches. Now, we're late for absolutely everything except for 420. 
That's disgusting. That that tells me there's something in our brain. Like a bird knows how to fly south. We know when it's 4:20 when it's time to smoke. <laughs> now the the worst time to focus on uh, CPT cannabis people's time is trying to get a meeting together of activists. That is like herding deaf cats. It is absolutely <laughs> amazing. Like they'll look at you and they still won't even listen. Deaf they don't. Cats. Yes, they don't give a crap what's going on. So I've developed a technique when I have to have a meeting with activists. Is I treat them the exact opposite of my grandpa because of CPT. If I have to have them there at 5 o'clock, I would tell my grandpa 6 o'clock because he always rolls in an hour early. With cannabis activists, I give them an hour earlier, and I tell them to roll in there at 5, or I'm sorry, at 4, because they know they're going to roll in at just about after 4.20 in their car, which takes about half an hour. They show up right at 5. Right. See, you have to think ahead. Uh, there are other a few disadvantages of uh, times perception with stoners. This comes with cooking. We're all amazing cooks. We enjoy cooking, but we often forget about how to broil. We've caused many fires spacing off that 30-second little window we have in there. We need to be more focused on our time. Now, when it comes to jobs and our cliches of always being late, not being good employees, we're amazing employees, but we often show up late. Now, this is not because stoners take a long time to get ready because we're up in the morning. We're like, do we need to shower? No. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to shave? Yeah. No. <laughs> do I need to eat breakfast? No. I'm just going to head out the door. I'm going to get ready to go. I'm, I'm half hour early, but we didn't plan for this because we were the worst at getting out the door. We walk outside, we're like, oh, crap, I forgot my shoes. <laughs> oh, crap, I forgot my pipe after you get back in the house. And finally, when you get up to the door, you're perfectly on time, but you did not plan for emergencies, like Cottonmouth. You knew you were going to swing into 7-Eleven because of that. And there's also there's food enlightenment that happens on every day, especially here in America. I'm sure you realize this, Kira. You have food enlightenment where you learn things didn't exist. Like today, the reason I was slightly late, I had a food epiphany. I was unaware of the Carl's Jr. blue cheese bacon burger, and that's why I was seven <laughs> minutes late. I had a food epiphany, but I allowed small amounts of time. Uh, you have to be aware of lockouts. Stoners are very, very bad about not giving themselves time to lock their keys in their car. We often do it. So unless you're going to look at your keys in your hand as you shut the door, have AAA and a backup key to save yourself some time. Have both. Oh, please do. <laughs> please do. It's very important. Uh, and most important about this is, is when it comes down to time is we need to stop focusing that time is going to be around forever. We invented time. It's our perception of how this little explosion we're existing in the universe. And the first one that really realized this was all the baby boomers that sat around the 60s and talked about how ridiculous the prohibition of cannabis was. And I'm sorry, the baby boomers have failed by waiting for tomorrow by being a little bit stoned and waiting for next week. And so what it is is cannabis time to start acting like Gandhi and be the change you want to see in the world. We need to start acting out against prohibition and stop supporting drug cartels by you know, passively embracing the cliches of prohibition. So it's time to use logic, it's time to have fun, and it's time to get off your ass and vote. Just remember it comes down fucking voter mail-in registration. It's made just for stoners. Use it, people. Thank you very much. My <laughs> name's Todd Armstrong. I'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah! Great topic, Todd. And, uh, of course, you're always performing all around town here in the great Pacific Northwest. Yes. What's the What's the lineup, my man? Uh, Cannabis Cafe on Saturday, and then I'll be down in Silverton, Oregon to make some rednecks think uh, next Saturday <laughs> on the 15th. Now, now, Silverton, now Silverton <laughs> might surprise you, though. Oh, no, yes, I was joking. Just like Brownsville, there's a, there's a small little enclave of open-minded folks. That no, I mean, people might know this from our national audience, though. Uh, when those stories came out about Oregon's transgendered mayor, mm -hmm. that's the mayor of Silverton. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Silverton's going to outdo yeah. Portland no matter what. We, yeah. have, we have a mayor that bangs 17-year-olds on their 18th birthday, but they have a transgendered mayor. So that's how you out Oregon and Oregon City. <laughs> Bang so. a 17-year-old on their 18th birthday. Well, they wouldn't be 17 on their 18th birthday. But see, because I, I look at it this Start way. I, I was born at like <laughs> five... 520 or whatnot, you know, maybe it was could have been like, it, it, was it exactly 18 years? It was like 17 years, 364 days, and 21 hours. Oh, you man. Never know. You never know. Behind those horn rims hides <laughs> a lot of tears. <laughs> Speaking, of course, of Portland Mayor Sam Adams. Yes, that's right. No, my, my, my beautiful friend, my best friend in the world, I will not name his names because he's a government employee, made out a beautiful comment about today in America, it is time for you to bang a guy if he's 17 or 18 but it's not appropriate if a politician bangs a girl if she's 17 <laughs> or 18 learn your lesson David Wu yeah, there learn you your go. lesson David Wu <laughs> alright folks and Coleco's gonna have your job <laughs> boom in your face. right ColecoforCongress.com check that out dot org I think Coleco it's for time to vote for a little Hawaiian that's right <laughs> hey when we come back we got time for some more news from Montana on that alcohol tobacco and uh, firearms memo that took away the second amendment rights of medical marijuana patients and a little bit of of Radical Ranting. So stay tuned. This is Normal Show Live.
It's tough talking to kids about marijuana, especially if you might be a parent who dabbled a time or two in your youth. So to help you out, get your copy of Dr. Mitch Earlywine's latest book, A Parent's Guide to Marijuana. Dr. Earlywine is an associate professor of psychology at the State University of New York at Albany and an expert on the studies concerning marijuana, its effect on health and society, and the methodology behind the statistics. He is a frequent guest here on our daily audio stash. Dr. Earlywine lays it all out without the propaganda and scare tactics that parents know won't work with teenagers. He presents a rational understanding of cannabis, what it is and what it isn't, and why kids shouldn't be using marijuana. You can order today through Amazon.com or check our links at our blog, stash.normal.org. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after a word from these 420 friendly sponsors. Wait a minute. This is Internet Radio. There are no dials here. Hey, this is Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger Seeds, TGAgenetics.com, and you're listening to The Normal Network. Hello, this is Webb Hubble. Life insurance is now available for responsible marijuana smokers. For years, responsible marijuana smokers have not been able to access affordable life insurance products. Normal uniquely supports cannabis consumers. Two carriers have already agreed to offer all of their traditional life insurance products at all levels without excluding individuals who smoke marijuana responsibly. Help Normal and help yourself. If you've been declined for life insurance, are paying above market premiums, or simply want to know what now may be available in the way of insurance for marijuana smokers, contact me at info at mclaughlinonline.com or simply call me at 202-293-5566. You want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! And you have offended a Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hula! Radical rant. All right, folks, got time for a radical rant here. Uh, but before I do, I got to get some news to you that we kind of hinted at yesterday. And I just wanted to follow up on this because uh, it has been confirmed. Montana's congressional delegation and attorney general denounced the stripping of the Second Amendment uh, rights of medical marijuana patients in their state. So some good news uh, from the elected officials there in the state of Montana, which, you know, uh, of the 16 states that recognize our Ninth and Tenth Amendment rights to uh, medical use of cannabis, uh, perhaps none is more associated with the Second Amendment than the state of, Mo- than the big sky country, the state of Montana. Now, I guess maybe the hunters in Michigan might disagree with me a little bit, but uh, I'm going to go with Montana on this one. Uh, so it's no surprise that the people of Montana are reacting the most strongly to this recent memo by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, explaining how registered medical marijuana marijuana patients who are dutifully obeying state law do not have a right to purchase or own weapons or ammunition. And uh, according to the Great Falls Tribune, uh, the both of Montana's senators and its representative have come out against this Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives memo. This is from the uh, Great Falls Tribune. Democratic Senator John Tester wrote to Attorney General Eric Holder and the memo's author, urging them to, quote, immediately reconsider this misguided effort. Quote, these regulatory changes infringe upon the privacy and Second Amendment rights of Montanans while placing an unreasonable burden upon the small business owners who sell firearms and ammunition, end quote, Tester wrote. He continued, quote, It is unacceptable that law-abiding citizens would be stripped of their Second Amendment rights simply because they hold a state-issued card authorizing the possession and use of marijuana for medicinal purposes, end quote. Now, uh, Montana's representative, Denny Rayberg, through his spokesman, Jed Link, criticized the policy and the Obama administration, quote, 
Between the ATF clamping down on gun rights and two new anti-gun Supreme Court justices, Montanans' Second Amendment rights are once again under fire from Washington, end quote, Link said. And then Senator Max Baucus said he will continue to defend individual gun rights. Senator Baucus said, quote, I'm concerned to hear ATF may be impeding the rights of law-abiding folks, Baucus said. Individual gun rights must be protected, and I'll never stop fighting to make sure they stay intact, end quote. Now, the Belgrade News here is reporting that Montana's Attorney General, Steve Bullock, has also criticized the Obama administration's move to disarm lawful medical marijuana patients. From the Belgrade News, uh, the ATF's edict that marijuana users may not own or possess firearms or ammunition, quote, implicates serious legal issues under the Second Amendment and the Equal Protection and Due Process Clauses of the Fifth Amendment, Bullock said. It also flies in the face of the state constitution, which protects the right to hunt. Bullock said some medical marijuana cardholders may not use the drug all of the time, yet the firearm restriction would apply to them for as long as the card was valid. Also, marijuana patients must have the written authorization of a physician to obtain a card, the fact the ATF ignored. Quote, the ATF letter does not take this into account, even though the controlling federal regulation recognizes that a person who uses a controlled substance in a manner prescribed by a physician is not disqualified from possessing or buying ammunition or guns, end quote, under federal law, he said. The prohibitionists seriously miscalculated when they went after the guns of medical marijuana patients. I'm hearing from a lot of people who aren't particularly fond of marijuana, but they find this move by the federal government deeply disturbing. I think the feds anticipated that the public would applaud keeping guns away from the druggies, but failed to realize that many people don't consider marijuana a serious drug problem compared to the meth, crack, or heroin plaguing their neighborhood, and that a majority support the medical use of marijuana. The silver lining is that the blowback from this federal overreach is probably bringing some people off the fence and into supporting our side. So I just wanted to make sure that we got that news across. The federal delegation, two senators and one representative from the state of Montana, have openly criticized the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms memo and are standing up for the Second Amendment rights of medical marijuana patients. Now, on to the rant here. Uh, you may remember uh, earlier this uh, this last month, September 12th, we reported on Representative Steve Cohen from Tennessee uh, filing a letter with the Office of National Drug Control Policy and drug czar Gateway Gil Kurlikowski uh, on the thought... He's, uh, begins by saying thank you for your solicitation of thoughts and ideas for the 2012 national drug control strategy and uh, representative cohen goes on to agree with the drug czar that there are drug problems that we do need to combat uh, he says to be clear i'm not suggesting that drug abuse drug addiction are not terrible problems heroin meth cocaine crack and other similar drugs are highly addictive cause physical damage and often lead addicts to criminal activity to fulfill their habit this is where we should concentrate our law enforcement activities. Uh, but our national policy, again, according to Representative Cohen, our national policy concerning the personal use of marijuana and the use of marijuana for medicinal purposes is misguided. Marijuana does not belong on Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act alongside such hard drugs as cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine. There is no evidence that marijuana has the same addictive qualities or damaging consequences as these harder drugs, and it should not be treated as such. Similarly, the so-called gateway drug theory has been thoroughly discredited with respect to marijuana. Marijuana ought to be placed at the lowest end of the Controlled Substances Act in accordance with its true risks. He goes on, uh, Representative Cohen goes on to inform uh, drug czar Kurlikowski about the estimates of criminal justice costs for marijuana use at $7.6 billion per year at the state and local level, noting the 850,000 annual arrests for marijuana at $10,000 per arrest. Uh, Representative Cohen also goes on to cite the racially disproportionate nature of the arrests for marijuana among African Americans and Latinos as compared to whites, and points out how the consequences of having a drug conviction on one's record are severe and self-defeating. Employment, education, and housing opportunities can all be denied on the basis of a conviction in your past. This dooms people whose only crime is possession of a small amount of marijuana to second-class citizenship. 
I urge you to advocate for public policies like expungement of nonviolent drug offenses that would mitigate the collateral consequences of a conviction for marijuana possession. And with respect to medical marijuana, Representative Cohen points out that it's an issue of compassion. He had a personal close friend who was suffering from pancreatic cancer who benefited tremendously from smoking marijuana. Uh, medical marijuana is also an issue of states' rights, especially if we believe that, as Justice Brandeis said, states are the, quote, laboratories of democracy, end quote. We should not interfere with the will of the people to enact these compassionate laws. This was the letter written by Representative Cohen, uh, uh, selected highlights from it uh, on September 12th. Well, yesterday, yesterday, drug czar Kurlikowski replied to the letter from Representative Cohen, and I contacted the reporter and Representative Cohen's office and got a copy of that letter to Representative Cohen from the drug czar. Now, as we read this letter, <coughs> we have some special software here with the Liebermater that makes it possible to detect falsehoods as they are being read over the air. It's really some uh, amazing groundbreaking algorithms here that are put together. Uh, so uh, let's see if I can find this here. Um, <laughs> where did he go? Oh, gee, there it is. So whenever we read this letter from the drug czar and you hear something that is incorrect, the Liebermater will point that out by this sound that will... T yeah, there we go. That sound will let you know that we have heard some incorrect and uh, uh, information, and I will, you know, address that to let you know what the correct information is. So this is from Drugs R. Kurlikowski. In your letter, you raise several important issues, which I would like to address. First, you state that marijuana is harmless, non-addictive, and should be decriminalized. Secondly, you state that individuals should have access to marijuana for medical purposes. And lastly, you cite the harm that can be done to an individual if he or she has a drug conviction on his or her record. I would like to begin with points of agreement. First, this administration agrees that we should expand alternatives to incarceration for those whose criminal offense is related to an underlying substance abuse problem. Now, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The Liebermater also goes off with uh, half-truths and misdirection as well. This is a misdirection because what the alternatives to incarceration are that they're talking about are drug courts that sentence you to a rehab that you do not need. All right, let's go on with the uh, drugs are here. We are also working to remove barriers for those who are in recovery or have fulfilled sentences related to drug offenses. Well, yeah, once again, that's you know being sentenced to drug court, and if you pee in the jar and do as you're told, uh, they want to help you out then. They don't even think about maybe not treating that as a crime in the first place. Uh, as we go on, the drug czar says, and we agree that having a drug conviction on a person's record can cause that person unnecessary hardships. However, we disagree with your points on marijuana legalization and marijuana for medical purposes. From day one, President Obama has been clear that science, not politics, should guide our nation's policies. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that one's just blatantly false. Uh, the science shows that marijuana has medical purposes, and yet it remains in Schedule 1 among drugs that have no medical purposes. We continue with the drug czar. It is precisely because of what the scientific and research communities have shown us that we oppose any policy that would make illicit drugs, including marijuana, more available in our community. Now, no, actually, it's precisely because the way the federal law writes your job description, Mr. Kurlikowski, you are required by law to oppose any efforts at making marijuana legal. All right, we continue with the drug czar. Scientists at the National Institute of Drug Abuse, the federal government's leading research on the science of drug abuse, confirm that marijuana is not a benign substance and that it is addictive. Well, depends on exactly what you mean by addictive. If you mean delirium tremens, picking bugs off your skin, bouncing off the walls, puking, shivering in a cold sweat in the corner of a trailer addictive, uh, then no, it's not addictive. Uh, we go on. The drug czar says, in fact, the lifetime risk of drug dependence in cannabis users has been estimated at about 9%. Now, that's actually true. That's a, a true fact. Uh, he fails to let you know, though, that the addictive rate of the legal drugs of alcohol and tobacco, alcohol's addictive rate is about 15%, tobacco's addiction rate is about 32%. The drug czar continues, the rate of dependence on marijuana uh, is nearly twice as prevalent when compared to any other illicit psychoactive substance. 
yeah, that, that's kind of a double shot there, because while that's true, it, yes, it's kind of misleading. Uh, it is the most prevalent drug uh, used by people compared to any other psychoactive substance. Doesn't that tell you something, that if it's so popular, more people want to use it more than any other drug, that maybe they know what's best for them? Hmm. Uh, further, marijuana is the most prevalent drug uh, used by young people and is associated uh, with lower academic performance and uh, fatal drug driving accidents and visits to emergency rooms all across the country. Yeah, let's go with this. The lowered academic performance is oftentimes because kids that are caught with pot get suspended and then their drugs fall, their their grades fail as uh, they are suspended from the school. Uh, fatal drug driving accidents, that's only testing of their urine to see whether or not they have used drugs. It has nothing to do with whether or not drugs or marijuana cause the accident and the visits to emergency rooms across the country. If you fall down the stairs and break your legs and they ask, break your leg and they ask you, have you smoked pot? And you said, yeah, I smoked pot yesterday, they put that down as an emergency room visit with respect to the use of marijuana. Now, as the drug czar con continues, he says, we share your concerns about the importance of providing relief and dignity to individuals in the last stages of life. <laughs> Bullshit. If you had any concern about the importance of relief and dignity to people, you would allow them to use a safe, non-toxic herb that your own DEA judge called the safest therapeutic substance known to man. Uh, the drug czar continues. To that end, we ardently support research into determining what components of the marijuana plant can be used as medicine. Uh, in other words, we support research into taking the individual cannabinoids out, packaging them up in some sort of spray or inhaler that doesn't get you high, but does have a barcode on it so our friends in the pharmaceutical in industry can make a lot of healthy profits and donate that some of that back to our favorite party's uh, uh, re-election campaigns. That's what's going on there. He goes on here to talk about Marinol. Uh, to date, uh, the FDA and the Institute of Medicine have not found smoked marijuana to be a safe or effective medicine for any condition, nor has any medical association come out in favor of smoked marijuana for widespread medical use. That, again, is an outright lie. The American Medical Association in 2009 finally admitted that, yes, there is a medical value to the use of smoked cannabis in the treatment of neuropathy, in the treatment of wasting syndromes. It's right there on the website website. You can go look it up at the American Medical Association. I've got more to say about this. We're going to continue it on in hour two, but this is all the time we've got for our friends in hour one listening on the podcast. So for those of you checking us out, thanks for joining us and uh, check us out live at live.normal.org sometime. You can catch all the fun in hour two. For everyone here, Cannabis Carry, Cannabis Carry UK, Todd Armstrong, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow with more news and interviews you can use for the cannabis community. And until next time, Take care of each other, tokers. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Take it out one more time. You take a seat, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seat, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seat, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth.